Well, I started working with wood probably as a little kid. And my good friend and I, who are buddies since we were five years old, would carve wood and make all sorts of fantastic things, or at least we thought were fantastic. And I suppose it, woodworking as a, as a craft or as a, an art form came about slowly. Also during my young adult life, I was trying to be a um, jack of all trades, playing the flute, playing the guitar, doing woodwork, doing athletics, on and on. And I thought, if I'm going to get good at something, I'm going to have to focus here a little bit. So I decided, literally, uh, directly, to go at woodworking. You know, as I was approaching this stuff and trying to get better, I'm always trying to get better at it, I was focusing on two things, technique, so that you don't have gaps in your joints, you have nice joints, and design. So I don't know which comes first or if they go together, but you've got to have some technique. Again, over time, I try to get a little better and a little better, and, and I always thought, I never want to copy anybody's work. I don't want to make somebody else's piece. I want to make stuff that I design. Now, that doesn't mean I don't take ideas from other people's works, but uh, along that line, then, I bought a number of books. I have quite a library of fine furniture being made in the world, and... Uh, see elements of this piece or elements of that piece that I like and maybe incorporate into mine. I kind of use the uh, parallel of music. You know, there's only, what, 12 notes? But there's a whole lot of different music made out of the same notes. And I guess it's the same sort of process for me. I've been influenced by what's called Danish modern which isn't modern, it actually came about in the 1930s. Since the 70s, there have been a number of books, increasing number of books published with fine furniture. Now, the, the term nowadays, by the way, is studio furniture. I've been associated with the Minnesota Woodworkers Guild, mostly Twin Cities uh, woodworkers, and you share ideas with them. And then in my later life, kind of towards the end of my uh, working in a what we call a real job. I've been to three two-week courses in Maine at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship. And they bring instructors in who are in these books that, that I've been looking at. Really exciting. And then you come home from those and the design ideas start to multiply. In that light, then, I have um, enough design ideas to take me beyond death. So I hope on the other side, they got a wood shop. <laughs> this was sitting around that I had made as a model, and I thought, well, look, that could turn into a music stand. So the next step was, all right, I had to do something I'd like a music stand that you could stand up or sit down and use, so it had to be adjustable. Then I thought, all right, I made a, a dummy out of a, some, a two by four, with uh, this being a cardboard piece that the music stand would attach to. And if I put a groove in here, it could slide up and down, okay. So, and again, this is all model making for getting the design down proper and looking at how I'm going to attach the legs. Then the next step was to make a, a fake music stand here, you know, that tilts like this. Then I thought, I like curves on everything, so this has to be circular. If this is going to be inserted into the body to slide up and down, to keep it from just sliding out, there's a T-slot as well and then a matching rib on this piece to hold it in place so it'll all slide up and down. And it'll have to be made in such a manner that when the wood swells up in the summer with the humidity that it won't stick. Always a trick. And it's been sitting here while I do other things waiting for further inspiration to get building. But it's all fun, creative process. Sometimes you, you get one in your head and it's finished in your head before you even draw it and sometimes 
you have a little spark and you have to keep working on fanning the flames of creativity. You're looking at a, what's going to be a table for a person's home library. And the, the concept was we wanted a stack of books random, reasonably randomly uh, arranged, topped with a, uh, a table top that as also functions as a checkerboard. So we decided, or I decided, to not only make a stack of wooden books, but to make them have drawers just for, for fun. And then on the top, here comes the, the top piece, which will sit something like that. The spine isn't on the thing yet, and, but the checkerboard will pull out this. It'll be attached to the top and it folds out, and then we have we can play checkers. Now this is not, not completed yet because none, none of them are glued together, but there are several secret compartments in here, so we're, we're having fun. The whole thing is fun. This was last Christmas's gift, so I don't build too quickly. Will it be finished by this Christmas, Roger? Well, we're hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's always hard to, uh, to verbalize the stuff because it's an internal creative process, the satisfaction of building something, uh, having it turn out nice in my eyes, and then the additional benefit of people coming in and saying, oh, wow, I like that piece. And then I suppose some people think the ultimate compliment, people pay money for a piece. Now, I, I don't do it as a business. I mean, it's just a creative drive and the self-satisfaction. Um, and a lot of the times I'm working here, I work alone. It's just that really pleasant, uh, focused, um, sort of zen moments when you're really into the creative process. But that whole process is just uh, always, always very satisfying. And uh, as I tell people, I have a wood stove in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to talk about this stuff and I enjoy people coming to visit and sharing what I do and I like visiting other woodworkers. It's just a great fun one thing and I guess what a privilege that I can spend a portion of my life doing this stuff and I may make a buck I may not make a buck I may have a house full of furniture and no place to put it which has already happened <laughs> <laughs> but there we go I can't stop